Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on the tarsal tunnel and this is essentially the carpal tunnel for your foot. And I'm going to be listing off the components of the tarsal tunnel using this acronym that's very handy to remember them. It's Tom, Dick, and Very Naughty Harry. So this actually lists off the components from top to bottom. So Tom is the most proximal and Harry is the most distal if you're thinking about your foot as the proximal being up to your thigh and distal being right at the tips of your toes. Okay. So, Tom, Dick, and Very Naughty Harry, what do each of these stand for? First, we have tibialis posterior, okay? So, tibialis posterior is one of the deeper muscles on the back of your uh, leg, and it's outlined here in red, and what it's going to do when it flexes, it's, let's say, it contracts, so we're going to pull up. It's actually one of the muscles that not only contributes to plantar flexion, like the rest of the muscles on the back of your leg, but it's going to contribute to inversion. So when tibialis posterior contracts, you're going to be standing on the lateral side of your foot. So that's foot inversion. Okay, and the tendon here is outlined in green, so you can see how it attaches onto the tarsal bones. Next, we have the flexor digitorum longus. So this is exactly does exactly what it sounds like. Here it's outlined in green. Again, it goes through the tarsal tunnel. We have the yellow outlined here onto the foot, so it's going to flex the four smaller toes. Not the big toe because it has its own tendon, but the four smaller ones. And finally, we have the flexor hallucis longus, which is our hairy. So if you think Tom, Dick, and Harry, the three people in our acronym, the flexor hallucis longus is our blue muscle, blue muscle over here, and it's going to give off this red tendon going up to the uh, big toe, and it's going to flex the big toe. And in between the uh, flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus we have and very naughty so this is the artery nerve and vein associated with the tibia so if we look over here on the right we have the popliteal artery which uh, gives off a bunch of branches so we have the anterior tibial the fibular but the main one we're going to pay attention to is the posterior tibial because this is the one that passes through the tarsal tunnel so we're looking at the posterior tibial artery when we think of and in our acronym Next, we have the vein and the nerve. So both, both the artery, vein, as well as the nerve go down through the tarsal tunnel, and they split off into medial and lateral plantar branches. So all of these three behave the same. They're going to contribute medial and lateral plantar branches after they pass through the tarsal tunnel. So let's do a quick summary up here in this diagram because it's very simplified. So here's our tibia outlined here. Then we have our talus bone, our calcaneus, and here's our flexor retinaculum to protect our tarsal tunnel. It's very similar to the carpal tunnel. So our, we have our tibialis posterior, so that's our tom, flexor digitorum longus tendon, that's our dick, and very naughty, so we have our artery veins. The vein is actually not in the original diagram. I added it here in blue, so and very naughty, artery vein nerve for tibia, and the flexor hallucis longus for Harry, so that's our flexor house, this longest tendon down here. A uh, couple differences. So the if you think of the carpal tunnel, you have the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. Here, instead, we have the flexor digitorum longus. So if you see the flexor digitorum longus, you think of the foot, not the hand. Okay. Also, um, our tarsal tunnel has an artery and a vein going through it unlike our carpal tunnel, uh, because if you remember, going through the carpal tunnel, we only have the median nerve, okay? So that's another little difference. So I hope this video helped, and I'll see you guys in the next one.